Welcome to ATC CAD. My name is David Atkins. Being able to use blocks is a critical AutoCAD skill, as it enables you to reuse geometry that you've already created. We've covered how to use blocks in a previous episode. You can find it in the card above or in the description below. What we haven't covered is how to create blocks yourself. In today's episode, we're going to cover the process of making a basic block, some of the neat functions that AutoCAD lets you take advantage of when authoring them, and how to make a block annotative. We won't be covering attribute-based blocks or dynamic blocks in this episode, but those will be covered in future episodes. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out. Let's get started. Before we get too deep into creating a block using the tools that we have, let's talk about the most basic way you can make one, importing a drawing. Any DWG file that you import into your current drawing using the block palette or the old insert block dialog becomes a block by default. You don't need to do anything special, it just happens. When you insert an external file, it brings in anything that is in model space and uses the drawing origin, or 00, zero as the insertion point. This works great for floor plans, details, title blocks, or any other complex geometry that you may need to bring into another drawing. If you don't like the insertion point that AutoCAD gives you, just move the point you'd like to use as an insertion point to 00, zero in the original file. If the insertion point needs to be super accurate, make sure you type in pound 0,0, zero, zero when moving the geometry to make certain it all moves to the absolute coordinate 00, zero and not something slightly off. Bringing in another drawing by inserting it as a block has the additional benefit of automatically scaling it correctly if the two drawings are in different units. Just make sure that both drawings, the block and the file you're inserting it into, have the proper units set beforehand. For complicated drawings like a detail, this process works just fine. But for simple blocks like furniture, symbols, or equipment, we often need to make the block while we're still inside our main drawing. We start by drawing the geometry that we will eventually turn into a block. You'll want to pay attention to the layers you're drawing in, as this will affect how the block works when you use it. For blocks that represent real objects with real size, we'll make sure we draw it at full scale. If you need to make a symbolic block or anything else that needs to be scaled, depending on the scale of the drawing, We'll cover that later in the episode. When you are drawing your block, you need to choose what layer you want the geometry to live on. You have two choices. You can draw your geometry on layer 0, or you can draw it on any other layer. If you draw it on layer 0, you can move that block to any layer you want afterward. Moving it to another layer will apply that layer setting to the block, so you have a very flexible block that can be used in many different circumstances. If you draw your geometry on any other layer, or combination of layers, then that block will always be controlled by that layer's properties. You can move a block to a different layer, but its display won't update, and the line work is still going to be controlled by the original layer that you drew it on. This is great for drawing consistency. In this case, I'm just going to draw a simple desk. It's a rectangle with a couple of legs, nothing fancy. After drawing it, I'm going to make a copy of it. The one on the left will be moved to layer 0, and the one on the right will be moved to layer furniture. I'll be making a block out of each, so you can see how the different layer changes how the block works. Having finished drafting the desk, it's now time to turn it into a block. In the Insert tab of the ribbon, you will find the Create Block command. If you hit the arrow under the button, you'll also see the Write Block command. The Create Block command makes the block in our current drawing, and that's it. Write block creates the block in our current drawing and makes a new DWG file outside our current drawing so we can use it in a bunch of other projects. We'll explore write block in a little bit. For now, let's choose create block. You can also type the letter B and press enter. Inside the create block dialog, we need to tell AutoCAD three things. First, the block needs a name. Every block in your drawing needs to have a unique name, so if I was planning on using several desks in my project, it would be a bad idea to name it something generic like desk. I should use a more descriptive name. Second, AutoCAD needs to know what point we want to use when inserting the block. If we click this green box, it will hide the Create Block dialog and allow us to click on a point we want to use. You should give it some thought. This is a desk, so reasonably I'd probably want to place it either in the middle of a floor or up against a wall. 
so somewhere on the back line is a good choice. Whether I choose a corner or a midpoint is up to me. A corner would make it easier to use the block in a corner. The midpoint would make it easier to use the middle of a wall. Whatever point you choose, using O-Snap to pick is critical to getting an accurate location. Once we click on the point, the block dialog will return. The next thing the AutoCAD needs to know is what line work will the block actually have. We'll click on this other green button, which again hides the Create Block dialog, and select all the lines we want to turn into a block. When we have everything we need, we simply press Enter. This is everything we need to have, but there are several other options we can choose from. The first option is what should happen to the geometry we selected after we're done. We can replace the geometry with a new block, the most common option to pick. Or we can leave the geometry as lines and rectangles and such. This option is useful if we're planning to make a bunch of desk blocks that look similar. Finally, we can delete the line work if we choose. This is more useful when using write blocks since we're writing out the geometry as a separate file, and this can help us clean up our current drawing. In this case, we'll be using the Convert to Block option. In the Behavior section, we can choose if the block scales uniformly. Generally, this is a good idea. We can decide if the block can be exploded or not. We pick that if we want to keep the block from easily being changed. And we can decide if it should be annotative, if it scales itself. This option we'll cover later. Aside from that, we need to make sure the block unit matches the units the block was supposed to be drawn in. This defaults to the units of the drawing. But if I've been inside an inch drawing, drafting up a cut sheet that was in millimeters and didn't notice to the last minute, you can change it here if you made that mistake. Finally, if you're a manufacturer and want people who download and use your block to be able to go directly to your web page and buy the product, you can add a hyperlink using this option. Descriptions aren't necessary, but I've never been sad to see them. Since we won't be editing the block more, make sure the checkbox Open in Block Editor is unchecked. Then we click OK, and the block is created. Our desk is now a block, and we can place more using the block palette, and everything is sunshine and roses. When I turn the other desk that we created on layer 0 into a block, you can see that it functions the same way. But if I move the first block to a new layer with a new color, that block does not update. But when I do the same thing to the block created on layer 0, it does update. If I change the color of the new layer, you can see only the one on the left changes. To change the color of the one on the right, we need to change the original layer's color. Even though AutoCAD does say that the one on the right is on the new layer, its display is still controlled by the old layer. This can be a bit confusing when using the layer off command as it's trying to turn off the wrong layer. If you've ever experienced that, now you know why it's happening. For real world objects, we will always make them full size. But for symbolic blocks, we often want to change the size of the block depending on how we scale our drawing. This is the case for most text based blocks and for blocks that don't represent a real world object. Electrical engineers use symbolic blocks all the time. This is the symbol for a duplex receptacle, and as you can see, it doesn't look anything like the real thing. We want this symbol to be the same size when we print, regardless of what scale that print is at so we will make it annotative. When making an annotative block, we want to draw it at the size it should be seen on a sheet of paper. I always find it handy to first place a piece of my standard annotative text nearby, with the annotative scale set to 1 to 1. This helps me get the sense of the size I need to make the block. Now I'm going to draw my geometry. A circle, a couple of lines, easy peasy. I want to make sure that the size isn't stupid next to my text, and if it is, I want to scale it now before I turn it into a block. With that done, I'm ready to start the Create Block command. You must use the Create Block command to make an annotative block. The Write Block command doesn't have that option available. Most of the steps are the same. Give the block a good name, select the base point, and select the objects. In this case, I'm going to choose the Retain option. You'll see why in a moment. Finally, I need to make sure that the checkbox next to Annotative is selected. Every other option is the same as before. When I click OK, the block will be created. You can see it in my block palette. But the geometry is still a circle in two lines. As I mentioned before, using Retain makes it easy to make similar blocks, like this quad receptacle. To use the annotative block, you need to set your annotative scale to the scale you want, and then place the block. Here it is at one quarter scale. 
And here it is at 1 8 scale. If we switch to a layout with two viewports, we can clearly see that the symbol is the same size when printed, which is what we're looking to achieve. Hooray! Making a block that only exists in your current drawing is all well and good if you're planning on only using it there. But of course, we generally want to use it outside our current drawing as well. This is where right block comes in. In addition to defining our block in our current drawing, it also writes out the block geometry into an external DWG file so it can be used in other places. This is not a requirement, by the way. If you watch my video on how to manage a block library, then you know that we can load any drawing into our library and have any block in that drawing available to use. If you haven't seen that video, I can definitely recommend you watch it next. If we are making a simple, non-annotative block, we can skip the create block command entirely and just go straight into write block. The process is very much the same. Define a base point, select the objects, and verify the units. The main difference is that you name the block by giving it a file name and location instead of naming it directly. When trying to make an annotative block, however, you must use create block since annotative is not an option in write block. After you make the block, you can then use write block to take any existing block and write it to the file system. Since we've already made the block, we can choose the block option at the top of the write blocks dialog, select the block we want to write out from the drop down list, and validate the file location using the browse function, as you can see here. Now our annotative block is also available to any drawing we want to use it. Being able to make a block is a foundational AutoCAD skill, and one that you should become intimately familiar with. Not having to redraw things you've already drawn, and being able to select a bunch of items with a single click makes blocks a highly useful tool that you should be using daily. In a follow-up episode, we'll discuss creating a block with attributes and editing blocks that already exist, which is another useful skill to have. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss that topic, and maybe hit the bell icon so you know the day it comes out. If you found this helpful, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button. It definitely helps the channel out. If you have any questions or a particular topic you'd like us to cover, let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in our AutoCAD Revit Inventor Fusion 360 MicroStation Simple 3D SketchUp or 3DS Max classes, check us out at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.